All right, everybody, thank you for being here. I'm Ivy Rivera, Psychic Medium, coming to you from the Ivy League Psychic Academy, where we are raising up the next generation of light workers. Today, we are all sitting together here talking about fighting the dark. What is the dark? Why does it come and attack us? What can we do about it? Um, first and foremost, what we need to understand is that dark energy is never going to stop coming in to attack us. It doesn't work that way. People who say that there is no such thing as dark energy and that it's really your fault, it's you being negative or you giving it too much attention, um, that's a myth. There will always be dark energies in the universe. And the reason that we deal with them when we come here to Earth is because Earth is a very particular kind of a classroom. When we come here, we know that we have agreed to go through many, many trials and have to learn new lessons. And part of that is finding techniques for survival, which includes fighting for your soul, fighting for your spirit. And that is not that is not all about the light and that is not easy so what i want to do in here today is to break down uh, the seven most common experiences that people have with darker energies and how they end up being attacked or manipulated or drained by them i also want to expose a few different situations where people are pretty darn positive that it is negative energy coming at them and it isn't it's just sort of you or the way that you're handling it or it's the universe has allowed for certain tests to be put on your path that you're supposed to learn and grow from there's a huge difference there okay so when we are dealing with experiences that are uncomfortable they seem toxic or negative or like we're being attacked but it's supposed to be there. It could be for your own growth and development. And this is everything to do with your karma. Okay. We do another class here called uh, Karma Contracts and Past Lives that you guys might enjoy. This is about you taking an opportunity to be positive, to manifest what you want to see, and to always, always, always say, what is the lesson here? What am I supposed to be learning from this experience? Now, if you think about it, you're really supposed to do that with everything, aren't you? Right? Every person that you meet, every situation that you encounter, every health problem, you're supposed to say, what am I supposed to be learning from this? We live in a society that kind of negates that. We're taught not to think, not to process, not to be still, but to go, 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 earn that almighty buck and just live your lives um, in this really closed off type of a way. So without those questions being asked, it's natural that you would start to think in paranoid right, terms, that you would start to think that you are under some kind of an attack. That is not at all the case, okay, a great deal of the time. However, it does happen, and I want to break down why it might be happening, okay? Before I do that, I want to go around the room, and I would like to hear from you guys an experience that you had recently, a long time ago, whatever, where you experienced darkness attacking you, or you thought it might be, and what occurred with that. Do you want to start? Who has an example or question? I can start. Okay. Um, I think I can recall a lot of examples where I felt the dark attacking me. Okay. Um, but one that really sticks out in my head is just a random day leaving my house my intention just to go about my business run my errands and literally almost every single person or situation i encountered mm -hmm. just came at me with such venom like for example um, i was sitting in my car minding my own business and because this woman who pulled, was pulled in beside me needed i guess to like extra wide this extra wide space to like fit her child in or whatever right just started like randomly assaulting me and was swearing like as if i were to know that you know like heaven forbid you should be in her space exactly mm -hmm. and um and it was just like a, a series of unwarranted things to okay. the point where you wanted to go home jump in bed and never come out again Whoever wakes up in the morning and you feel like this is not a good idea today, <laughs> today in general is not a good idea. You just yeah. want to crawl in a rock, you under a rock and stay there. You right. can feel yeah. it 
coming. Well, I'm sure you had that yeah. on that morning. Anybody else want to share experience that you had? Um, I had an experience with a girl that I, I told you about a girl I knew in high school who was, um, she was teased a lot and um, she has become a Reiki master and I thought, you know, it would be good to, like I saw something she posted and I was like, wow, you know what, I agree with that. We're probably more on the same page. But then after I became friends with her and we started talking again, she started attacking my political viewpoints and she was a huge Trump fan and even to go to the point of saying that she loved him, which I'm fine, whatever you want to say, you're a fan of that. Right. But to say that you love him, that there's got to be something going on there that's persuading you to be on the defensive for someone like that. So I don't know if that's what that relates to in terms of dark energy or if you Almost like that. obsession. Yeah, well, like, like obsession you get obsessed to, with certain people yeah. and it makes you yeah. wonder, Who how do you get obsessed people? with certain people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. one thing to respect the policy. It's another thing to become uh, in love. Yeah, but then to attack me on it and say, well, I thought because, you know, you were in this type of work, like light work, that you would be different. Sort of the cult you know? mentality. Yeah, exactly. The cult mentality, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Okay, so that's interesting. Anybody else? <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Okay. One of the things that happens to me a lot, very similar to um, what... Rose was saying with people who are masking themselves because I work in the light work field. People who are masking themselves as light workers to be able to attack others. It's not on, on very far from what maybe the Catholic Church has done all those years, right? Being able to attack people based on their power and wrap it up in God or something like this. I get a lot of that. I also get mostly, primarily, more what Lisa gets, and that's probably what everyone watching here gets. Which is an overwhelming sense that something really bad and toxic is coming your way. And it starts to pellet you from all angles throughout the day or over the course of several days. That's an attack. An attack from the dark side, negative energies in the universe. They will typically come after your vehicle. They'll possibly come after your health, your body. You need to be careful where you're walking, crossing the street, the way that you're driving, your seatbelt, things like this. They will come through the people closest to you. So even if you have great relationships and a great loving foundation, those people could all of a sudden start to attack or become dark. Your romantic partnership could start to fall apart. Your work, you know, work problems will come up and you'll be like, what on earth is going on? So really what happens is that when these negative energies come in to attack, they manipulate whatever and whoever they can get access to. So it would be a perfect world, and this would no longer be the earth probably, right? Mm -hmm. If everyone was mindful, if everyone was aware, and if everyone was taking full ownership of their energy, then none of this would have the power to take over. But do we live in that kind of a world? No, people are mindless, people are out of control, and people are ran primarily by their emotions, by their emotions, okay, which also leads us into greed and things like that. So when people are emotionally charged, they're going to make flighty decisions based on whatever is best for them at the moment. There's no longevity there and that could change at any point. So I would say this, first and foremost, for your own selves, your own karma, your own goodwill, and the example that you want to set for other people, you want to make all of your decisions based on your intuition, not emotion, okay? And also based on logic. Your logical left brain thinking about any type of a situation is very rarely not going to match, okay? If it's a good move, it's, it's going to match your intuition, your gut instinct, that feeling that you have about a person or a situation. So make sure that you're working from that, not your emotion, which is flighty, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, I want to break down the seven, okay, most uh, major reasons that we get attacked and how do we get attacked from the dark. So number one, when you're about to move up a level, whenever you're about to move up a level in the world, you will automatically, like a light switch, an automatic trigger, you'll start to be attacked. Now, spirit, God, the universe, your higher mind, may be allowing this if it's going to be good for you in some way. 
if it's going to stretch you, make you grow. And we have to know and believe ultimately that God, the universe, will take anything even bad and convert it into good. If we know that, we believe in that, that can also occur. But when it starts to happen, you want to not necessarily just look at things in an airy fairy, rainbows and butterflies type of a way and say, oh, I'm sure God will convert this into good. Everything's gonna be great. Everything's going to be fine. Or, oh, this is some kind of a big test for me. I just need to focus on what I need to learn. I caused this. This is my karma. The smarter thing to do is to say, what is around me? How is it coming in and attacking me? And if you can pinpoint it, you can start to manage that immediately. So typically, before you start to move up to the next level, a promotion in your job, you're going to get married, you're going to have a baby, you're about to win the lottery, whatever it is. Before this happens, you will receive disturbances in your sleep at night, being woken up. Something dark, something negative in your room. Nightmares. And intruding thoughts surrounding the trouble that you have at night with your subconscious thinking. So all of the unresolved issues that you may have. Let's say you're about to move up to the next level, but you're afraid maybe you won't do well. All of those things that you're comfortably putting away during the day and you're triumphant over, when you're sleeping, you're susceptible to manipulation. Okay, your guard isn't up anymore. That's the human condition. So all of those subconscious worries will start to come to the surface. You may also see things be broken, taken away, removed from you. If you're about to move up to the next level with your career, but the one most important thing that you have is your vehicle so that you can commute to those new jobs or locations, your car may start to have trouble. One problem after another, after another, after a flat tire, after a breakdown of the engine, thousands and thousands of dollars. And it can seem incessant that this comes at you. Whatever the circumstance is, what you need to do is clock the triggers. The same as you would do if you were talking to a therapist or a doctor who's trying to figure out what upset your well-being, okay? You want to find those triggers in your energetic world. So when you're high energy and you're about to move up, negative and low energy is going to come in to upset that balance and to drag the high energy down. So where is it happening? Always, always, always start to check at night. It's usually the first place. And then with your negative thinking, negative thinking. Any questions on that? You've seen that happen. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, if, if, if this happens to me every time I'm about to be happy or I'm about to get something good, maybe this means there is no God or that there is no one watching over us. I don't see it that way. I just see it as a battle. And that is where I believe God puts you up for a test. Let's see if you can stay positive. You can really find the truth of what's going on. But it doesn't help to have a bunch of people out there who are supposed light workers that are teaching that the dark doesn't exist. It makes us incredibly, incredibly vulnerable to attack with absolutely no shield to protect ourselves. Now, the number one most attacked group in the world are the empaths and the light workers. So if you have empathic ability, I would recommend the empathic means lecture to you. It's downloadable. If you have empathic ability, you're automatically a light worker. You're automatically a healer. And the dark energies of the universe want nothing more than to wipe those people out. So your entire lives may have looked like a series of traumatic horror stories, okay? Yeah. That you've had to overcome again and again and again. Okay. Uh, number two. When you've gone through a hardship in your life, an operation, an illness, even something as simple as a broken leg, okay, a surgery, a removal of a tooth, if you've had job loss, divorce, death of a family member, okay, well, heaven forbid, loss of a child, anything like that, any hard hit that you've taken, um, 
what can happen during that time is that you shift more from the right side of your brain over to the left side of your brain. And when that happens, you're susceptible to attacks. People who stay in the right side of their brain are living more in the moment. They're mindful of their energy. The right side of the brain is the artistic side of the brain. It's also the intuitive side of the brain. When we're tuned into the right side, we can understand more of how the universe is working with us um, to lead us where we need to be. We can feed from the strength of the universe and God and our spirits. We're more tapped into our higher mind, which is our inner compass for what's best for us and all of that. Okay, great energy there. Bye-bye, thank you. But when we go to the left side of our brain, it's kind of like a, a fight or flight response. It's kind of panic, it's only logical brain thinking. It's in the box thinking. It's incredibly, incredibly limited. It's all about logic. And when humans get upset and they tend to go to the left side of the brain, that automatically cuts them off from the right side. Now, what happens there is that you're living in fear, you're working from a place of ego, and you become reactionary. It's not of any real value to you to stay there for extended periods of time. Okay? Now, when that happens, because you have cut off from the positive energy of the universe, you're also susceptible to the negative coming right in and working you like a tool, okay, and taking over. Now, when I'm talking about things like a broken leg, um, you had a tooth removed. You lost your house, you lost your job, anything like this. What happens during that time is the average person will then sit down in almost like a timeout chair, a timeout area, and that negative energy accumulates. Now, when negative energy begins to accumulate, it attracts other lower and negative energy. So we call this law of attraction. Okay. When that happens, it ends up spreading not only to other people in the house, but to the, the rest of the house or your job, your vehicle, whatever it is, the objects in the house, the atmosphere in general, takes on that negative tone. And it's like a downward cycle, a downward spiral that has to be cleansed. Now, we're not going to get into a ton of uh, cleansing techniques in here today. We do another class that gets into that in full called hauntings, clearings, and attachments. But... We'll get to some of that today. What you need to be mindful of is this. Whenever you've gone through a tragic experience or you've had a bout of depression, you need to understand that wherever your little safe haven was, your little pocket of toxic space where you went to go deal and cope with all of that, that began to accumulate energy. And if it's been a while and you didn't clear it out, it may have even turned into paranormal activity and spread to the rest of, of, of that atmosphere. So we want to remember that through events in your life that were uncomfortable and dissatisfactory, it grows from that because negative and lower spirits in the universe automatically step up and take advantage of those unfortunate circumstances. You are a food source, your energy, your energy that spirits higher up and in the light want to use to get their message across, to get healing out to the universe and the world. You are also a food source for negative, lower and darker energies to suck and drain you dry. And they use opportunities like that to do so. Okay. Make some sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why do you think I mentioned also like the uh, removal of a tooth or having a surgery or having an illness or a broken leg or something like that? Do you feel where that might be going? Possibly even like the medication. Drug use. Taking? Yeah. Drug use, okay, yeah. which leads us to number three. Alcohol and drug use, okay? Had my fun with it. I've had my days. I've appreciated my time, okay? Life can be a real party. It also makes you widely open and vulnerable and completely susceptible to the manipulation of lower and darker energies, which is not such a good time, and it's not so easy to get off that ride once it happens. So there are a lot of people who are positive, wonderful, lovely people who've lived their lives entirely in the light and all of a sudden they have a broken leg, they have a disease, they have something that they go through and they get put on heavy medications or treatments. And when that occurs, their bodies are then open and susceptible to negative and lower energies coming in. 
Um, you can watch with a lot of people who maybe can drink from time to time and there's no big deal. Um, you can watch almost like a light switch with them. There's a certain line that you just don't cross. And maybe at one point, while they used to be fun and enjoyable to go out with, they no longer are. And when they even have just a couple drinks versus the eight or nine that they used to be able to have, they all of a sudden turn very dark. You'll watch their face change. You'll watch their demeanor change. You'll watch their eyes change. They don't even seem like the same person. They'll say weird things. They'll do weird things. They are being manipulated, okay? And when you are doing it to that extent, whether it's coming from the meds that the doctor prescribed to you, okay, for your, for your illness, or it's coming from the bar, um, what happens is that a spirit is able to get literally inside your body and cause a possession. So your friends and family could very well be going back and forth from being themselves to having an attachment that's working them to literally having a full on possession that's working through them and has now become them. Now, what we need to remember about possessions is that they don't typically just stay. It's really not like the exorcist. Has anyone ever seen that? Or the exorcism of Emily Rose. There were a lot of really good accurate movies on these accounts. But what a typical possession actually looks like is that the entity will go in the person's body and use them and then sort of step back and take a nap for a while and then come back up to the surface when it's useful for them and then go back. Probably when they're coming up to the surface, it's, it was a time when the human being was going to fight back, progress ahead in their lives, be around and influence a bunch of other good people who need uh, positivity. But mm -hmm. instead, they come into their body and they try to wipe everybody out. So they will always take advantage of a big opportunity or when someone's about to move up to the next level. That's when the possession would come back up. Now, the reason their face changes and their eyes change and all of this is because they've literally entered and you, you can't deny that the, per the person no longer looks the same because they're not the same. It's just now the skin, okay, is still technically the same and even that won't last. Really? Any questions on that? I've seen that. Oh, There's a yes. girl I don't talk with anymore because she didn't, she was an addict and like when she was wasted one night, I mean, yeah, she was a totally different person. You can't get through to them either when they're like that. And a lot of people who want to mask themselves as light workers who want to continue to use and say that it's not a problem, they will often channel during that time and they will make you think that they're channeling your grandparents or your beloved mother or your lost child or something like that in a bar and all of a sudden you'll notice their face change and then they'll channel someone else and their face will change again. They will start to take on the form even of whatever that human looked like. That is not that person channeling through them more often than not. It's a, it's almost like the use of the Ouija board gone awry. Not that mm -hmm. I have a problem with the Ouija board per se, but if gone awry, it's a major problem. Okay. So people who are altered are not typically channeling from the light. Why is that? Because spirits in the light don't go there. Spirits in the light have common sense. Spirits in the light have rules that they have to abide by in order to stay in the light. And one of them is bringing healing to the world. And they would never do it through dark energy outlets. True? Never, never. So you don't even have to question that. Just run for the hills. No, thank you. I don't need a reading in the bar. I'm good. Okay. Um, sadly, I want to say in conclusion um, that I feel that a great portion of our population, especially here in America, and especially today and within the last couple years, are possessed or dealing with attachment issues. I can see them. I can see that these are no longer people. They're like zombies. This is not normal, and we're at an all-time high, okay, which is also counter, it's an attempt by the darker and lower energies in the universe to counteract the awakening, okay, that is also going on throughout the world. So, of course, when the light increases, the dark is going to increase, okay? So, just be mindful and watch people. Now, does that make you good, right? Does that make Brittany great and, like, me a horrible person? No. We are all susceptible. We are human beings. We came to earth. We are all susceptible. Watch your ego, especially meaning fear, okay? Or drive toward power plays and things like that. Keep your ego in check. And it's a lot easier to keep the dark energy in check. All right, well, we talked about drinking and drug use. Not good. Anyone who also um, starts to move up to the next level in their life, it may not make logical sense. You might just get a job promotion. 
Okay. And you're like, Oh, this is amazing. I got this job promotion. And all of a sudden, um, you know, the spirit wants you to stop smoking and you can't stand the smell of alcohol anymore. You feel weird when you drink or you drank and you didn't even drink much, but you blacked out. You're like, I haven't blacked out since I was 16. It doesn't make any sense. What's going on? That is your body's way and spirit's way of telling you you're done with this habit for whatever reasons it needs to go and stop polluting you. Okay. All right, number four, negative thinking, self-doubt, brought on by your own unresolved issues or a meeting of new circumstances. One of the saddest things that I see with negative and darker energies coming in is that they use the greatest opportunities in relation to other people. So much of the human experience has to do with being in community with others. And one of the hardest things in our society is that we've learned to cut off from other people and live a sort of dog eat dog type of a lifestyle. Well, one of the areas that have taken a really, really hard hit are our are, are love lives, relationships, marriages, things like this. Um, so people may very well come into your life, be set on your path to help you to grow or to evolve. And there could be a ton of potential with that love partnership, but immediately lower negative energies come in to start attacking it. So be very careful upon the entering of any new love affair and also old love affairs. Okay, so things that have been there for maybe even a long, long time, there's an addictive element that can come in with soulmate connection, past life connection, karmic contracts, karmic lessons with someone else. Um, it's essentially the relationships, boundaries, and cord cutting that we talk about in here. When that's there, that's a beautiful thing. It's wonderful to have members of your soul group that you're meeting and working with. But when that's gone awry, negative, lower, and darker energies will absolutely come in to manipulate that to bring you down. So always be in control of your own energy. And if there are relationships that are truly toxic, I don't care if it's your parents, if it's your marriage, if, even if it's your children, you need to set the boundaries and stay away from that. Now, when we're talking about your own self-doubt, um, unresolved issues, it's unfortunate that people don't take enough time to do some self-examination. Pay attention to your dreams. The dreams that you're having are coming to the surface a great majority of the time to show you what it is that you aren't comfortable with about your own self. Usually it has to do with your um, confidence. Okay, so if there were dreams that you had that repeated, does anybody have one of these? You remember having a cycling dream? You're always like, why do I always end up having this dream? I hate when I have this dream. Why am I always running? Why am I always in this house? Why is it always my childhood house? Why this? Why that? Well, that has everything to do with something that you have as an unresolved issue, probably with the people that were involved during that time um, that lingers, but also primarily with a certain identity that you took on about yourself during that time. So a great example is that I had for 35 years or so, the same repeat dream about my childhood house. And I was running and I was trying to get away from circumstances there and it would just happen again and again and again. Well, a house represents your body. It's not an actual house. Are we good? Yep, I'm just making sure. We're good. Okay, we're good over here good. too. All right. A house represents your body. So the houses could change. It could also go from a house to a school or something like that, okay? But it always represents you, who you are. So, you know, we get, we, we also don't do enough dream analysis, so we don't understand what the symbology is actually telling us. But if the house is you and the people around at that time of the dream that you're having, you can play off of that and go back and analyze what traumatic thing was said or done to me during that time. What did I learn about myself that year? And how could that possibly be affecting me today? It's not that hard to figure out, right? We just have to take the time. So by all means, keep a notepad and a pen in your bed at all times. Don't move. When you wake up from a dream, if you get up to go to the bathroom, it's long gone. You roll over to get a drink. If you even roll over, it can be gone. Keep a notepad and a pen on the side of you at all times. Jot down your dreams. You need to analyze those. 
especially, okay? So they're a gateway to helping you to understand what's unresolved in your daytime uh, life. And if they start to surface uh, more frequently than other times, I would also say this, it's very possible that the universe is about to bless you with an opportunity to move up. Now what's gonna happen, okay? Those are helpful dreams, that's when it's you. That's when it's your own karma. That's when it's your own lesson. It's not lower and negative energy coming in and attacking you at night. It is your subconscious mind trying to tell you, you need to grow and develop from this because an opportunity is coming. We want you to be able to take it and move forward in strength. But what happens the second that opportunity comes? Then you are going to be under attack. You don't want it coming from multiple angles. Okay, again, figure out your triggers. Any questions on that? Okay, number five, here's a good one. When your intuition increases, you have kundalini or any kind of an awakening, okay? So I see your face going a little sour on me. When you go through an awakening, you become enlightened, you move up to the next level with your abilities, especially your intuitive abilities. One of the first things that can happen to you is something called kundalini. Um, you guys can Google it. I won't get into it a ton. Kundalini is a detox. It is a releasing from your chakras, from your body, from your mind, your body, your soul, your past lives, everything that has to go. Anything toxic or that has become a block for you in your evolution has got to go periodically. So when you have an awakening... All right, you're going through a kundalini, a detox. You are really, really susceptible to lower and darker energies coming to you and wanting to stake some ground at that time. It's a wonderful thing to go through an awakening. It's an honor. It's happening because you are supposed to move up in the world as a healer for other people and for yourselves. Um, you probably just learned something tremendous or you've released something that was there for who knows, possibly even lifetimes. But because you come under such heavy attack to prevent you from doing that good work out in the world, you're susceptible. Okay? So be mindful. It's something to celebrate. Moving up to the next level is absolutely something to celebrate. It's also a time to be on guard. And I've seen countless, true, have we seen countless light workers come through here? and move up to the next level and then go dark just like that mm -hmm. okay and anywhere else they seem to go for teaching they tell them there is no dark there's no such thing well then why does their light go out so quick because they don't know how to protect themselves from the darker and negative energies that are coming in to take over them and prevent it this is serious okay so light workers especially and empaths need to be on guard any questions about that Okay. Now, it is biblical that you are to guard your thoughts upon waking and sleeping. Why, um, you know, why did we hear that? Why is that written in the Bible? Because in the Old Testament, in the books of Solomon, there were training manuals for prophets, like what we do here. There were training manuals for mediums and psychics. We were all taught to do this in a very particular, clean manner, only working with spirits in the light. And we were, um, then those books were removed, and then we were put in the New Testament with um, rapists and murderers and devil worshippers. And there's only one Bible that remains, an Old English version, where any of those training manuals from Solomon are still in there, and they're not of very much use. So I believe that what's going on in here at the Ivy League is that I have been given the actual structure of what was originally written there. And that is the method that we use in here. This is a huge uh, part of this discussion that you have to be on guard for your thoughts, especially upon waking and sleeping when you are most susceptible because the veil is lifted. Who's heard of the veil? Okay. What do you think of when I say the veil? That fine line um, between spirit and the human world. Yes, the two worlds. Where they can communicate. Yes. If the veil is thinner, it's easier to communicate. It's the same idea as Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. People love Halloween because it's where the veil is lifted. It's the one day of the year where there's no veil between the two worlds. But what do we look at? Do we see a bunch of angels walking around on Halloween typically? Or are we looking at the darkness? That's dark. Okay, it's not only dark, but there's a lot of dark there. We can't deny this. This is crazy to deny this. So 
what we're talking about when the veil is lifted and the biblical interpretation, I believe of that is that you are susceptible. Therefore you have to be on guard. Now, is it easy to be on guard when you're sleeping? Of course not. So when you have to catch it, as soon as you wake up, who in here wakes up and tends to immediately have depressive or negative toxic thoughts running through your head within the first few minutes. Does anyone experience that? I used to. I, I was years ago. Yes. Yes. Everyone in the room. It's like your mind is yeah. under attack yeah. because yes. Yeah. Right so when you wake up, exactly. it's heavy drop. Yeah. Like a sinking mm -hmm. feeling. A like sinking feeling like you want to crawl into a hole and die. You can't were, even approach the dead. Especially if you were like like you were talking about before in a period of time where you suffered some sort of hardship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sure. was worse then, of course, right? Right. Yeah. And that. and even on days, when even on done. nights mm -hmm. where yeah. you had wonderful dreams, right. even when you had a great night's sleep, you could still wake up and feel like you just got punched in the stomach. Mm -hmm. That's when you're under attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So again, it is biblical. All right. I don't, I don't care what your religion is. Nothing at the academy is based on religion, but look up all those verses in the Bible that discuss this type of thing. Those are great shields of protection for you to know how to fight that off. So you are to do what in the morning? Convert it into an attitude of gratitude immediately. The second you wake up, the way you fight that energy is to think of 10 things that you're grateful for. My fingers are moving. I can breathe. My eyes are working. I have food downstairs to go eat. Thank God for my Keurig and my coffee pot and my French roast from Starbucks. Okay, whatever it is. And you think on these things again and again and again until it shrinks and that energy is gone and you've got the upper hand like you did before you fell asleep. Okay? Now, what do you do upon dozing off? That's even harder because you're going into it. Who has trouble letting go? Who jerks out of their sleep feeling like they're about to be attacked or they're about to fall into some kind of an abyss and it's about to be a scary experience? Okay, that might be a sign that you're about to be under some kind of an attack and you intuitively know it. One of the things that you could do, we have a dreams class here, we get in more depth, but it's called lucid dreaming. With lucid dreaming, you're choosing what you're going to think on and picture in your head and play as a movie, okay, in your thought process as you doze off. So one of the things that I like to do um, when I'm falling asleep and I start to get that weird feeling like something's about to go bad, I picture something I love like a drum circle. And I'm at a drum circle and I visualize this in my mind's eye. I'm at a drum circle with all the people that I like the most and there's a beautiful water and sunset right next to me. And we start dancing and we're all interacting, having a good time together. And as I doze off, that's the dream that I move into. Um, lucid dreaming is a technique that you can master in time so that it's not just when you're dozing off, but it's also when you're in the middle of a dream, you could take over, take control, manipulate your dreams. Okay. So control yourself at night, maximize your control as much as is humanly possible. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, I see this as a, a major time for people who are battling attachments and possession to be taken over also. So if you watch people who have attachment possession issues, they may never really sleep. All right. There's a lot going on there with that. Yeah. My dad used to sleep with a fan next to his head all the time. Oh. And I mean like literally right next to his head on full blast. And I honestly believe now that that's so that like he doesn't, he wouldn't hear things. Like mm -hmm. it kills everything around. And he was you know? dealing with, schizophrenic episodes wasn't he yeah. right and a lot i believe that people with not to say that there aren't disorders and i can't prescribe diagnose but i believe that um severe bipolar disorder mm -hmm. and schizophrenia and manic supposed manic episodes and all of this are forms of attachments and possessions yeah. that's all they really are there's always like the jekyll and hyde sure example. or if you even look at you know older people with dementia and things like this the spirits that they're talking to we as mediums know who they're talking to we can hear the same dialogue we're just not allowing all of this to come in and possess us. Yeah. What's well, going on out there? Interesting. So yes, drowning out the noise. And I think a lot of people do that. A lot of people prefer to fall asleep with the TV on, blaring real loud in that light. None of that is good for you. You can control this. You can get back to a healthy place, but you're going to need to learn lucid dreaming. And probably even a bigger reason that you're doing it is because you don't want to wake up with that sinking kick in the gut feeling and that's easier to control so don't give that any power because once you're awake you're awake it's easy to think of 10 things that you're grateful for right we're all very blessed in this room 
Can I ask you a question though? Mm -hmm. This has been, I would say, a recent habit of mine in the last couple of months. Okay. I have been taking comfort and falling asleep to listening to, like, for example, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, listening to like some of his like manifestation things, whatever. What do you think about that? Just because I know that's not the same thing as a television show that's rambling. I, I don't sleep. like it because okay. the words are influencing you. Okay. Now, if you enjoy all the words that he's saying and you feel that it's having a positive mm -hmm. um, growth type of a perspective, you know, influence on you, then that's fine. Then that's fine. In, indefinitely though your mind your growth may have other avenues that it wants to take okay. and with that noise coming at you in such a language okay language form mm -hmm. it will manipulate the same as a TV would okay you know it would be there are a million worse so things that you could have on be certain of the content of what be you're certain of the content on. and analyze is that where I am in my growth right now? Or would I rather listen to something like Deuter? Okay, so there's a good one. D-U-E-T-E-R. Deuter has amazing music out. Based on like meditation and things like this, there are no words. Even the music you listen to. Um, you know, choose something that has nothing influential in the content. But I love the idea of listening to something like Wayne Dyer, who is a light worker, right. who's promoting positivity in your thinking. You were probably drawn to that right now at this point in your life because it's bringing you some kind of healing and growth. Mm -hmm. And um, it's making you stronger. So there's nothing wrong with that. Again, too much of anything is not a good thing. Right. And words, while you're sleeping, not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Not a good thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of people put something on to try to drown out that effect and it's never going to work. It's going to happen anyways. You may as well make it something of value. Well, there's times I'll do that with this with my cell phone. If I can't sleep, so I have the TV on. I'll put that something on YouTube that because mm -hmm. you know how it keeps repeating itself. Or YouTube something. will repeat itself, yeah. Yeah, and then that's eventually I fall asleep to that. And then you fall asleep to that. Well, and there are a lot of great things on YouTube and yeah. Pandora and a lot of other channels where you right. can listen to something great like the crackling of a fire, right? The sounds of the ocean, mm -hmm. okay? The rainforest. Hopefully, no squawking birds. That's always mm -hmm. that always kills the mood, but something. Yeah, yeah. And then it's interesting too when you play it back the next day, it'll trigger deja vu, so you can remember dreams that you forgot. So it has, you know, has a lot of um, great outlets. Okay, so the last and most important, okay, way we have something going on here um, on this one. I don't know if that's going to stay up on the screen or should be okay. Okay, so we're wrapping it up anyways, yeah, so this should work better. out perfect timing, right? Yeah. Um, but the last one that I want to talk about is uh, that darker and negative, lower energy is in the universe, work through humans more than anything, okay? Um, we are the mouthpiece for God. If we are the mouthpiece for God, do we really believe that we could not also be the mouthpiece? For the devil, if you believe in the devil, okay, or dark energies of the universe, we are used as tools. Humans are incredibly, incredibly susceptible to this. We are vulnerable through something called clairaudience in particular. Clairaudience is the ability to hear spirits in our head as though it is our own thought. It is our own voice. So people aren't even aware that it's going on. Now, if you're a medium, you want more of this. You, you pray for, you work toward clairaudient ability. You want to hear the spirits just talking to you so you can relay those messages. But there are a lot of mediums who battle that because they don't understand what clairaudience really is. When a spirit comes in, negative and higher up, they put a thought in your head you don't even realize it happens and before you know it it could be coming out of your mouth it could be manipulating your other thoughts it could be entirely changing your direction and your mood in life so we need to be on guard what are a couple key things that might happen to you physically before clear audience kicks in perfusive sweating a sweating attack an anxiety attack ringing in your left ear okay now the grandmothers used to say, left for love and right for spite, and that was fairly accurate. When your left ear rings, it's a spirit coming in so close to you that it would make you wonder why they're that close. They could very well then insert the thoughts. 
lot of times when you think of your loved ones, you think, oh, I miss her. It's so nice to think of her. I wonder if she's thinking about me. You didn't do that. She did that. She came into your energy. She's sitting with you in the car. And when she came in, maybe your ears rang or maybe thoughts of her just entered your mind. That's her way of saying hello. It can be a lovely thing. It can also be extremely toxic, okay, if we're not on guard for it. So the way to combat this is through self-awareness constantly. Mindfulness of where your energy is. If you all of a sudden start to get angry and aggressive with people and you don't know why, it's probably that there's some kind of negative manipulation going on around you, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> negative manipulation. Everyone's poking each other. Yeah. Like, negative yeah, manipulation there, going on around yeah. you that is going to start attacking you and you are ready to fight, but you don't see it because it's invisible or it's in your head. So you're going to blame your own self and then feel guilty about your actions. So you start attacking people around you. You start to feel bad. Okay. That's, Depressed, negative, anxious, agitated. That happens, that happens to me to where you can ask my daughter. It's like, it's, it's like a burst. And then give me a couple seconds or something, and then it's like, gone. Yeah, it's like nothing. Right, right. And that leads me to the last part of this that's the most important thing. Unfortunately, when we start to realize that things like this are triggering us, that's great, but we have to then say, where is it coming from? And often when you look around at where it might be coming from, it's possibly coming from the closest people in your circle. Mm -hmm. All right, so when we talk about humans being the mouthpiece for God or the mouthpiece for the devil, um, we need to be realistic that the people in our circle, as much as we may love them, are the number one gateway for negative energy in the universe to get at us. You love them unconditionally. You always want to have them around. You want to have faith and confidence in them. But if they are not the kind of person that is really truly mindful and taking ownership of their energy at all times, then they're going to be manipulated and they're going to be used against you. Am I saying cut yourself off and go live in a cave? You know, uh, sometimes maybe, okay. Maybe sometimes maybe you do need a break. What's that? Maybe on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As often as you can, it's probably not a bad idea to get away from humans in general. Okay. Humans in general, especially if you're not surrounded by a bunch of enlightened people, you had better get away frequently. Go to the trees, <laughs> go to the water, go to the earth, go to prayer, go to meditation. Um, keep yourself clean of it, but um, you do need to um, set proper boundaries with people. So what I hope you take away from this today is an understanding of the triggers and an understanding of how and when to set those boundaries to not allow negative energy to come in and influence you, to not allow it to steal from you your blessings, your ability to move up in the world to not prevent our light workers and our empaths from evolving up to the next level because we get under such terrible attack at a time like that and to um, essentially watch your circle, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's, I like that saying that's like, you know, kind of you, you, keep, you keep your enemies close or whatever. We don't necessarily want to be um, doing that, but we do need to think of everyone as potentially being the enemy if they're not mindful of their experience and the energy that they're putting out to the world. Love them or not, have those boundaries set. Okay. Are there any other questions? What what triggers like the anxiety at nighttime? Because like I said, that's I. You know, I didn't fall asleep till nine o'clock this morning to be honest with you, and then mm. back up at twelve. Mm. Okay. So a lot of people with empathic have, ability. Uh, I'm going to recommend the Empathic Means Lecture to you again. Okay. A lot of people with empathic ability on the third and the fourth levels, they end up being night owls. Now, less than 20% of the population are actually night owls. And they ran a 16-year study in Europe that I wish I had had back in the day when I was on eight different kinds of sleeping meds and they said I had insomnia. When my night owl syndrome kicked in, which has never changed, I developed so much with my empathic ability and my mediumistic ability that I could no longer sleep during normal hours. So a lot of night owls go to bed anywhere from four to seven, uh, like a.m. It's not that you have insomnia, you can sleep perfectly fine, but just at a different time. You can also highly function working a night shift, which is a sign that you're, one of, you're part of that small percentage. Um, but one of the things that happens when your empathic ability increases is that your mediumistic ability increases. When that happens and spirits come in to communicate with you all the time, 
it causes an anxiety attack. So the number one most common physical reaction that human beings have to a spirit coming in to communicate is an anxiety attack. So at night, it increases. And the haunting hours between 3 to 5.30 in the morning, exactly. internationally known. Because he's even on here, when I read your name, he said, are you up at this time or, you know? Anyway. Yes. In one of your things, you mentioned that. Yes. Do you guys you ever wake up at this time and look at the clock? Mm -hmm. Right. That's, I'm like, ah, That's it. Between like, 3 to 5.30 in the morning is, yeah. is the haunting hour. So if that activity from spirits, lower and higher, if that's increasing during those hours, how could any medium really comfortably sleep through that? So our bodies change so much to adapt to that that we actually become night owls, this small percentage of the population that is then capable of carrying on a totally normal life in a total flip schedule. And you do need to build your life around that because otherwise it causes heart disease and a lot of other problems. And that's... Exactly. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hope to see you for other classes. Uh, for a full list of classes and events that are going on, Ivy League Psychic Academy .com. If you need to book a reading with me, you need a paranormal consultation, anything of that variety, a healing, Ivy Rivera Psychic Medium .com. Thank you.